In this video, I will show you how to solve keys and rooms from lead code. So the question says, there are n rooms labeled from 0, 2, and minus 1, and all the rooms are locked except for room 0. Your goal is to visit all the rooms, however, you cannot enter a locked room without having its key. Given an array rooms where room i is the set of keys da -da, if you can visit all the rooms or false otherwise i think this question is quite straightforward but the solution is not so straightforward so let's look at the example at here you're at index zero here you're at index one here you're at index two and here you're at index three so as it says in the question room zero is unlocked so when you're at room zero you get the key to unlock the room which is index one and then when you're at two you get the keys to unlock the room at at index two so this here says you got the key for the room at index one and here you got the key for index two and here you got the index for three but three is unlocked anyways so when you visit a room you may find a set of distinct keys in it each key has a number on it donating which room it unlocks and you can take all of them with you to unlock all the other rooms so this part seems more um, relevant to the second example right here so when you're at here let's label this again room zero room one room two room three so when you're at room zero you're able to unlock room number one and you're able to unlock room number three but you're not able to unlock rule number two because even when you go to room number one you're able to unlock one which is the one you're at well zero is unlocked anyway so it doesn't matter and then unlock room number three so two is unlockable and therefore it's false and again here it's also relevant for example two given an array rooms where rooms i is the set of keys that you can obtain if you visit the room i, i, which in this case is the index, return true if you can visit all the rooms, and false otherwise. Okay, let's see how we can solve this. Well, I can start off by creating a stack and saying this stack is contains zero because I'm able to unlock room zero. It's open, so then I can just assume, oh well, I have I have the keys. And then what I can do is create a set. And in this set, I will say, here are, for example, scene, or I can say the scene rooms or the keys, doesn't matter. And this set will take in the stack. So that let's say when I'm here and I have one and three and I move to the next room, and then I have three again, I do not append it because if I do, I just want to keep a record of all the unique keys in there, the distinct keys. There is no point of re-adding zero, re-adding one, and re-adding three. So I can now loop through my stack. So I can say while stack, pop me the value in there. So my stack has key zero. I pop the value right here. So here I'm going to have zero. So let's start with this example right here. So I have one, two, three, and I've not done anything yet. I just have an index of zero to start with. And I beg the question for J in rooms IDX. So I'm going to start with the first room. So this zero is going to go right here. I can see I have a mistake already. And it will be a room, so it's going to get me one. It's going to get the value 1 out of here. So for j in rooms idx, in this case it's 1. But hey, why did you use a for loop? Because just in case they were 2 or more, then you get 3, 0, 1. If this j is not in scene, so if this 1 here is not stored in my scene rooms, then I want you to... Oh, sorry. I want you to append this J to my stack. So, hey, I've not seen this key before. So now you're going to add this key one into your stack, right? And you want to add this to your scene rooms. So let me just copy paste this so it's faster. Okay. So what, I, what I've done right here is trying to make sure that I am appending 
the keys as I go along. So in the next loop, there will be two in it. And then two is going to go in here to get us number three. And then it will append it to the stack and add it to the scene rooms, which I can see I've also there. So if J is not in the scene rooms, two as follows. And at the end, what I can do is I can compare the length of the scene rooms with the actual length of the rooms. So in this case here, I'm going to have three. And every time I visit a room, I'm going to also have three. So in this case, it will return true because the equal the number of rooms is equal to the equal amount of scene rooms. Now let's see this code in action for the other example. So let's take this example down here. So in the first iteration, it will be one and three, as you can see right here, we have one and three. It's gonna append one to the, to the um, sorry, it's gonna append J to the stack. So this will be one. And it's going to add it to my scene rooms. So this will be one. And then it's also going to do the same thing for three. And then in the next iteration, it's going to substitute the IDX one here. So then it will get this whole number here, which is three, zero, and one. So it's going to check, hey, I already got three. Nothing to do here. Um, I already got zero. So nothing to do here because you have already zero and three from the previous iteration. And one, oh, I got one too, so nothing to do here. So the length of the scene room is still one. Does that make sense? And then it's going to take, it's going to pop the next value, which is three, and it's going to take a look at three, and it's going to say, wait a second, I already got zero. So nothing to do here. So when you look at the scene rooms, it will include three which is zero one and two so it will include zero uh, sorry zero one and three while the actual length of this list is four and the scene rooms is three so therefore this is not equal and it will return false if the first one would to had one two and three and it already has zero then this would have been four and then it would have been true please let me know if you have any questions regarding this Thanks for watching.